Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel. Welcome to another video. And I'm setting up the PC at the office just for this video. Hang on for a minute. All right, let me plug this right in so that we can have a big screen over here. Yes, much better. Okay, so um, welcome to this video. So uh, the title of this video is most likely gonna be something like, is full-time game development still a viable thing? And that spawned by the last couple of days or week. Of course, I had a little bit of under the, being under the weather last week and um, I only worked at the office to record last week's video and then to do the Orange Pixel Game Jam. Check that video as well. And after that, I moved my laptop uh, downstairs to the kitchen table for uh, two reasons. One, even though I'm sweating because of all this right now, this video, it's cold in my office. It's getting colder um, and my body wasn't ready for that. So it was too cold to work. I had cold fingers while typing that just didn't work. Um, second reason, change of scenery. Uh, more serious reason, I, I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling game development, wasn't feeling my games, wasn't feeling the work on these games. And I was, I was a little bit down. I guess that's the best way to describe it. A little bit down, a little in a dip. Um, and I needed to get myself out of it. And um, yeah, let's talk about that in this video because it's not always just a lot of fun. Most of the time it is, but every now and then stuff happens. So um, honest video after the intro. So um, first of all, it looks like I'm recording this video in the middle of the night. It's actually morning. It's 10, 10, 15 in the morning. I think the storm is called Babette or something like that. And it's, it's going to be raining a lot today, apparently. But anyway, it's the middle of the day almost. And it, it's just, it's dark. Another reason to uh, escape my office. This was not helping me get out of my, uh, my dip, my down period or whatever we're gonna call it um it wasn't helping so i needed to move my pc downstairs work on the kitchen table have the cats around me uh, aline was also working downstairs so we had two computers at the kitchen table and i got my creativity back but um, the main problem here or why i got into this little down dip down dip thing is that we're ending the year or we're nearing the end of the year. And for me, that's some sort of imaginary reset button. Uh, next year is coming January 1st. We're resetting everything. All the revenue made is reset. We have a new year and we need to figure out how to make money to make sure we can pay the bills around here. Um, I'm a full-time game developer. <laughs> Just by accident, yesterday evening on Discord, there was some talk about who is full-time game developer and Apparently I'm like the 1% in that, um, which yeah, almost makes you think maybe I'm trying to do things that aren't possible being a full-time game developer. I don't know. I'm, so far it's been working, but it's always a tight rope. And um, next year is coming. And uh, this year saw a massive amount of uh, layoffs in the game development business um, at everything, Unity, Unreal. Uh, AAA studios got completely wiped out by the investors above them. Um, smaller studios um, had layoffs, um, smaller publishers, uh, Team 17, I remember them one or two weeks ago also laid off people. I think all in all six to 8,000 people got laid off. I think uh, just a massive amount. And the problem right now is money. Um, money isn't free, it never was, but there was a time where interest rates were very low and now they are very high and getting money to invest in things is hard and difficult and it's trickling down from the top eventually to us because publishers will also have less money. Um, so it's gonna be harder to get your game published. Um, I certainly know that. Um, and um, just a lot of issues around games. And if this is a business like this for me, it's I have to figure out how to navigate the current landscape. And that's kind of got me a little bit panicked this week. So of course, I'm currently working on two games. Been mentioning that a lot of time on this channel. Um, Regulated City, my big title, been working on it for two years. Um, had investment for it. 
but the game isn't done yet it's very it's very far in development but i'm also not gaining enough attention for the game just yet so that's something that i need to figure out and work on uh, my second game gauntlet of power uh, that game has been in development a much shorter time and that's pretty much what i'm aiming for with all my current projects and new projects and i'm very happy with that one been working on this on it this week and there should be a new demo available so check out and i'll show some images somewhere right now on the screen for the game and so i need to figure out how to make money on those games um gone of power is probably going to be the first one to release um i got it in a couple events on steam here and there and that's a good thing um and people are enthusiastic about it i'm also sending out pitch decks to publisher or i already sent out a pitch deck to a bunch of publishers so far um one publisher who contacted me before the pitch deck uh, and saying they had lots of money and they were uh, able to fund stuff and after i gave them information on the game got them to play the game they pretty much said yeah we don't have money for funding right now but we can do the marketing for you and then i'm like yeah but i'm not if i want marketing i'll go to a marketing company who specializes in it and not to a publisher who wants a revenue split without me knowing what they exactly do so um, that one didn't work out. The other publisher will contact me long before the pitch deck. Um, it's very unique, but you're normally a publisher wants games later in the year. So these games, I set them to like quarter four, 2024. So that's another year from now before they had to be released. Uh, that's for most publishers like a good thing, but they came back to me saying they wanted just games for uh, Q3, which is now of 2023, or Q1 of next year. Which pretty much means they are looking for games that are already finished. If you're going to release them this quarter or the next, you'll probably already finish them. So uh, that's again another sign they are not willing to invest a lot into it. They can't invest into it maybe. And again, this was like a very big publisher, American and Chinese departments. And there was funding there. But right now they're looking for titles that are almost done already and don't need a lot of development funding, which, yeah, <clears throat> that's kind of the state we're in right now. So um, getting money or uh, finding money is hard to do, which means I have to figure out how to make this work in the next year with game titles. So I have an idea, but there's a little problem there called Steam. Let me explain. So the idea is to make it work you have to create games faster, which is on one hand difficult, but on the other hand, it's possible and doable. I mean, Gauntlet of Power, I think I've been working on it in total, um, maybe four months now, five months. I haven't kept track of it completely, but I know it's been a very quick development and we're almost, well, we're very far in development that we could release it if we had to, early access or just whatever. Um, I can do a couple of these games. I have some ideas already. I want to do a new Space Grunts game. I think I, I mean, the idea of that, the concept of that is already done. Space Grunts was my turn-based game, but it's playable at a very fast pace, whatever the player wants. Uh, and it was interesting, unique, and did very well. I could redo that type of game. I know what to do. I know what to code, how to program it, what to, I know how to do it. I can do that in four or five months. Um, another platformer, I want to do a platformer type game, already have an idea based on Gauntlet of Power, having drawn some of these new characters this week, I had an idea to create a combination of residual, my platform game, my last platform game, and then um, adventuring and um, like extraction type game. So I have some thoughts on that and ideas. Again, a platformer, I can create those in two or three months. I can create these games pretty fast. The problem comes... Uh, with marketing again or building up wish list and interest in the game steam doesn't work for games that do not have a lot of wish lists so for steam algorithms to kick in you need about 7000 at least 7000 wish lists you're not gonna get that in a week you're not gonna get it in one or two months maybe you can but most games will not so you need time to get that wish list count up and that doesn't match how to create games and actually make money on them so um i need to figure out how to do that uh, the best thing is to m somehow make sure these games are ready as soon as steam has a next fest uh, showing the demo that really can boost your wish list numbers if you do it right but that means i'm they have two steam next fest a year one in february 
you already have to submit your game for that. And the other one in October, you'll have to submit your game in May, June, I think. Tight deadlines, very hard to balance it. And um, it's like some sort of penalty if your game is created in a shorter game development uh, cycle because you just do not have enough time to show it to people. And of course, there are always exceptions to the rules and there are always games that stand out and do just that. But I don't want to risk my business and, and everything on having that thing, that ex exception to the rule. It's, <laughs> chances are very small. So um, I've been trying to just figure out how to make it all work. And um, that's been um, stressful. So there is a sort of a battle plan for the next um, year, I guess. Um, Contest of Power is gonna need to be released in early access, maybe a Kickstarter, or maybe unless a publisher shows up through a publisher. I'm open to all of that, uh, but I need to uh, do some decisions uh, pretty quickly. So if there's no publisher before December, I'm just gonna forget about that and just gonna think about doing a Kickstarter if that's an option. Um, and if not, we're gonna do early access somewhere. I'm guessing after Steam Next Fest, although I'm not sure if I can still submit for that Next Fest. So there's already a problem there because then it would be Next Fest in October and I wouldn't be releasing this game for another year. A problem. And of course, Regulator City is still being uh, developed and worked on and pushing updates and tweaking it and trying to just come up with something that works as well as Gaunt of Power. Because I noticed there are differences in how players respond to these two games. So I want them uh, or I want Regulator City uh, just uh, get more attention. And, and I think the difference, the big difference is that Gaunt of Power is very clearly a dungeon crawler, very clear what you have to do from just looking at it. And Regulated City is more complicated and communicating that complication to players or what you have to do and how much fun it is to do, that's right now the biggest problem. I might look at marketing agencies to work with on one or both games, um, but they usually cost like a lot of money without um, promising results pretty much. So even they know that what they do is really hit and miss kind of solutions. Um, it could actually be better for me to just find somebody who's willing to do it on like a five or 10% revenue share of these games. If the game sell thousand copies, you get a decent amount of money. If this game sells 10,000 copies, you get an even more decent amount of money. I don't know if that's a thing. If there's anybody out there who thinks he can do game marketing and is willing to bet on that for a revenue percentage, contact me, hit me up. Uh, we'll talk about it next year. Besides that, um, right now I got Stardash ready for Atari VCS release. I have um, Stardash updated on Android. There was something going wrong and it needed to update or it would be gone. I have Sir Questionnaire currently at Nintendo at LotCheck for testing for release on the Switch. So I got stuff rolling again that has just been laying there and just not moving and ready to go. But I just didn't have the attention or energy for it. And I just figured this week it was a good point or a good place to start and get back into it. So those things are coming as well. And um, besides that, I can't wait to start on the next couple of games because I have ideas on how to quickly get them up and running and then see if they work out or not. Um, so uh, yeah, excitement is there, but the struggle of making money from it is still there as well. Um, it's just going to be a balancing act and, and some sort of just figuring out how much time I can put into those games and how much they need to make to on return to make sure they are profitable. And also what does that mean for how many games do I have to release each year or in the coming couple of years until this all dies out a little bit and money is cheap again. Um, it's a lot of stuff to think about, but that's kind of why it's a business and I feel like I've been rambling. So I hope I made sense out of this video during the editing of the video because it feels like I've been all over the place. Uh, thanks for you and you and you and you and you and the weird guy at the back for watching. The last couple of videos have been doing pretty well. Um, so that kind of pushes me to keep making these videos because I was hesitating to create a video at all this week. So uh, yeah. Thanks for watching this one and the last ones. Uh, like, subscribe, comment below, hop on the Discord, come say hi.
keep following my journey as full-time game development. And maybe in s soon I'll be just doing McDonald's part-time. Alright, see you next week. Bye. That took a very dark turn at the end. I don't plan on doing McDonald's. But you never know. Just a side gig to balance it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.